Hi everybody and welcome back to Love English. So are you a student that has a problem with phrasal verbs? At, in, on, under, up. Oh, they're so confusing. I understand and that's why today I've got a special lesson for you about 10 phrasal verbs that all end with the preposition up. Don't forget guys to subscribe if you're a fan of Love English and if you're new to Love English then welcome. I hope you enjoy this lesson and that you'll subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram and Twitter. We're everywhere. <laughs> so follow us on those for more Love English fun. So phrasal verbs. Now just as a quick reminder, a phrasal verb is a verb with a preposition and together they take on a whole new meaning. Now verbs with the preposition up, up is used obviously when we're talking about making something higher like for example stand up means to stand, okay sit down to sit down. But also up can be used when we want to make something more or we want to make something bigger. So it's used for things with more energy where we need something to be more particularly. So number one, now this is a good example of when we want something to be more, when we want something actually to be louder, up higher, and it is speak up, speak up. And this means we want the person to talk louder, we would like to hear the volume higher. So we can say, I can't hear you, can you speak up? And this means please talk louder, please talk at a higher volume. So an example of this would be if you're on the phone, and you can't hear the person very well, you can say, sorry, I can't hear you, could you please speak up? Now, it's important to point out that you have to learn which verb goes with which preposition. So we can't start changing the verb. Just because speak works with up, it doesn't mean that talk can also go with up, or say can go with up. The only verb that is actually the phrasal verb here is speak. So we don't, it doesn't exist to say talk up. It wouldn't be the same. Um, so this is the problem with phrasal verbs. You need to, to find the perfect matches. Number two. Now, I'm sure we've all heard our parents say this. It's very boring to hear this, but they have to say it. Tidy up or clean up. And this is an example of where up means that we need energy in something, it means that we want someone to be active. So clean up means please tidy, please clean. And the same with tidy up, it means please tidy. So if your kitchen's a mess, you might say to your, your family or you might say to your partner or your husband or wife, oh, can you please tidy up? Can you please clean up? Or don't, don't move anything, I've just cleaned up. <laughs> Number three. So if there's a boring person at a party who doesn't want to talk very much or doesn't want to dance, you can say to them, come on, liven up. So liven up, this means be more lively. Please be more active, liven up. So we say it to people that we want them to be more energetic and, and be a bit more positive. Do you know somebody who needs to liven up? Maybe you can think of an example and tell me about it in the comments. Girls, number four is for you, dress up, to dress up. Again, it's a good example of when we want more of something, we want something to be more than normal. So dress up means dress more formally or dress more for an occasion. So you might wear a dress if you're a girl or if you're a guy you might wear a suit or a shirt and things usually for the evening. However it's not the only meaning for dress up. Dress up is also for occasions like for Halloween, for uh, fancy dress parties where people will go in a costume and they'll dress as someone else. Layla and I like to do this and you can see an example of us dressed up in our Halloween video. So go to that one and have a look at us dressed up. So number five. This is quite an easy one. It's one we use all the time as it's a part of everyday life. And it is to hang something up. Now it's usually used for clothing. So for example, we hang up our clothes on a hanger. The object which we actually use to hang up our clothes is called a hanger. So hang it up. So we put our clothes on the hanger. 
but we also use it for when we hang up the phone. So when we finish a conversation, we actually hang up. Now this is a bit of a strange one because you actually put the phone down and you press down on the button, but English is a strange, complicated, but beautiful language. And in this case, we say hang up, even though we're putting the phone down because we're ending the conversation. So it's hang up. So number six, to put something up. Now, this phrasal verb has several meanings, but the most common meaning is when we raise something, we put something up physically higher. So for example, we put up a painting on the wall. So normally the painting is higher than us, and this is why we say we put up the painting. We can also say to put a price up. So here, this is quite easy to understand. It means the price has gone higher. But you can also say, I'm putting my house up for sale, meaning I'm selling my house. So we put our house up for sale. So it's when we put something higher, something physically higher, or when something is going to be available, or for example, prices will be raised. Those are the most common meanings for put up. The second meaning, however, is to put up with something. Now this can be a situation, and it can also be someone. So to put up with something is when it's a, a situation which we don't enjoy, or someone whose company or things about their company we don't like very much, but we tolerate it, we accept it for whatever reason. For example, and I'll tell you a good and secret example, Layla is a little bit bossy, but I put up with it because I love her <laughs> and she's my good friend. You might put up with some of your partner's bad habits. For example, maybe they smoke and you don't like that, but you put up with it, you accept it. So things like this, it's things that in life, maybe we don't want, but we accept it, we put up with it. Again, please comment below. Tell me, is there something you have to put up with? I'd love to hear it, and I will check and see if you're using the phrasal verb correctly. So number seven. Now, I hope none of you have ever done this because it's not a nice thing to do. It is stand somebody up or someone up. And this means that you arrange to meet this person quite often in a romantic context, so a girl and a boy meeting to go out for a coffee or something like that, and actually one of you doesn't arrive. You don't come to the meeting. But the worst part of this is that you don't let the person know before. So they go to the bar or they go to the restaurant or the coffee shop and they sit there waiting for you expectantly, but you never arrive. <laughs> it's very, very bad. Please don't ever do that, people. So to stand somebody up, to make an arrangement with them and to never arrive. So number eight, this one is live up to, to live up to. And this means that we need to, or people might want to live up to something. So for example, if you have an older sibling or uh, an older relative who is more successful than you are, you think they are more successful, you might feel you need to live up to them you need to achieve the same as them. So to live up to your big brother. So you might say, oh, I'll never live up to my big brother's success. He's already a lawyer and I'm just working in a coffee shop. I, I'll never live up to that. So it's, it's about achievement, what we think we need to achieve, what we would like to live up to. So a very common way that we use this is when something lives up to our expectations but more commonly, it doesn't live up to our expectations. So we might say, hmm, actually, I didn't enjoy university. It didn't live up to my expectations. I thought I would enjoy it more. You can even say a film doesn't live up to our expectations. I was expecting the film to be better and I was disappointed. It didn't live up to my expectations. So something doesn't reach the level that we expected. So number nine. Now, I'm sure lots of us feel this because it's a very common human emotion. So we often look up to somebody, and this means to admire someone. Frequently, we use this for family members, older family members. And it's important to point out that because it has to be somebody who is physically older and normally taller, they might not be, but we use it for older family members. And it means that we admire them, that we, we, we think they're a good person and they're a good example for us. So you might look up to your big brother or your big sister, 
or you might look up to a grandparent or one of your parents, but commonly we use it for older siblings actually. So I really look up to Meghan Markle, Prince Harry's fiance. I'm, I'm quite jealous of her, I'll be honest. <laughs> but I really look up to her, I really admire her because I think she's a very elegant lady. She's a very successful woman. She's successful as a businesswoman. And also I think she's a kind person. I know she does a lot of charity work. So I admire her, I look up to her. Is there someone you look up to, perhaps a famous person or a member of your family? Again, tell me about it in the comments. I would love to hear about that. Number 10, we got there finally. Now this is an easy one, look up. So it's not look up to, which was a three part phrasal verb. This is just look up. And this means to search for something. So you can look up a word in the dictionary, uh, you can look up something on Google or on the internet, <laughs> or in an encyclopedia. I had some problems saying that word. Um, so you can look something up there. It, it just literally means to search for something. So to look something up or to look someone up. So this phrasal verb is a nice, easy and flexible phrasal verb. It's transitive and intransitive, meaning that we can put the subject in the middle of the verb and the preposition and at the end. So we can say, look something up, or look up something. Now, this grammar can be tricky, but I know just the lesson that will help you. <laughs> so Layla did a fantastic lesson all about the grammar of phrasal verbs, which is quite confusing. So if you want to know more about that, about where to put the subject in between the verb, or uh, the verb and the preposition, or after, go and watch her lesson now. And you can see the link there to go and see that. Right, that was our 10 phrasal verbs, all ending with the preposition up. Can you tell me what preposition would you like me to do next with phrasal verbs? Would you like to hear about phrasal verbs with down, or phrasal verbs with about, or phrasal verbs with in, out, under? Please tell me, and the next lesson I will make will be on a different preposition. So everybody, if you enjoyed this lesson, then please subscribe. And if you really liked it, then give us a thumbs up. We'd love to see those. And remember to follow us on social media. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Share this lesson. Help spread the love English love.